We're inside the battlefield at Ben Glover Stadium for the last of two MCPSS Middle School Championship football games. For the past two years, Scarborough has ruled the roost in large middle school football. But a week ago, the Causey Tigers ended all that with a playoff victory as they seek their second ever title. But across the gridiron stands the Pillins Eagles looking to cap off a perfect season and capture their own second championship in school history. Two teams in search of one title as we prepare to crown a new large middle school champion. Good evening, I'm Al Wheaton, joined by Corley Bounty. We're glad you're with us. Corey, two championship pedigree programs looking to get another title. Perfection on the line for one of these teams. 22 strong for Pillins Middle School, and we'll see if they're able to go ahead and capitalize and keep that streak alive. Action has already started. Causey won the coin toss. It is second and eight coming up here for the Tigers. As they're going to hand that ball off going just past the 40-yard line with the carry. Gavin Vagenson comes up about three yards short, so third and about three coming up here for the Tigers. And now the thing about middle school football now, eight-minute quarters is what we play. Also, no special teams play are involved, no punting or kickoff, so that's the difference in between middle school and high school football here. Third and short coming up here for the Tigers. And yeah, they're going to bunch it up. There by quarterback Carson Blair. Blair hands it off to J.J. Johnson. J.J. Jackson, rather, he's going to get the first down as he's tackled just near the 50-yard line right at the midfield strike. J.J. Jackson has explosive speed to where if he gets past the line of scrimmage, he is gone. So you have to make sure that you fill those gaps if you're pillings because we've seen the speed over the last couple of weeks here in the playoffs. And again, he is their go-to runner for this Causey offense. First and 10 for the Tigers at the midfield strike. Pillins is the home team. They come in undefeated on the season at 7-0. Causey only has one loss. Back to Jackson again as he turns the corner, lowers the head, and Pillins trying to lower the boom, but he takes them for a ride for about two or three more yards, Corey. Great job on the tackle by Ladarren Perkins, the eighth grader, 5'4", 148 pounds, coming up and making the stop for Pillins. Causey comes into the ball game averaging 13.4 points per game, only one loss on the season. Coming in with a record of 6-1 and one in this large division middle school championship, breaking the huddle. Something we rarely see in high school ball, Corey, a huddle up. <laughs> Coach Orso running that offense for this Causey middle school football program. High snap to Blair, but he gets it down to Jackson. He's met right near the line of scrimmage, falls forward for about two yards, so another third and short, call about third and four here coming up for the Tigers. And last time we did see third down, they were able to convert here, and you know that they want to do, they do want to go to their go-to running back in Mr. J.J. Jackson, but we'll see what this offensive line of Rashad Edwards, Jaden Evans, Connor Minishier, Caleb Fuller and Bradley Pugh are able to do at the line of scrimmage for this offensive line. The line to gain is the 40-yard line for Causey. Carson Blair right up the gut. He goes past the 35 into more of Pillins territory. That's the first down. The chains are going to move. Good job of Daryl Blackman with the stop. The eighth grader, 6'1", 175 pounds, but another third down conversion here for Causey as the clock continues to run right here at 4-10, remaining in the first quarter of action. First and 10, ball at the 33-yard line of Pillins. Carson Blair and the Tigers so far on the move here. As you talked about, offensive coordinator Mickey Orso, a name that may be familiar to a lot in the area, former freshman coach at Baker years ago. 
Another carry by J.J. Jackson. They continue to feed him the rock, Corey. Yeah, they're going to continue to feed him all night long. And we'll see here if Pillins is able to adjust and get them behind the sticks on first and second down. Because so far they've been able to have positive yardage right. on first and second, which is huge for this offensive adjustment here that they're running. This Pillins defense only allowing 5.7 points per game. They've pitched three shutouts on the season so far, but right now, Causey trying to drive it and get that goose egg off the board, overthrows his receiver, Carson Blair. Could not get that ball completed out to Camden Caceres. Too high. Almost like a jump pass. Yeah, you yeah. look for him to run that situation from the wide, wide receiver position. A little bit too high for him there, and now you're looking at a second down, and we'll call it six yards to go for Causey. Tigers pretty much play a spread offense, something we're familiar with on the high school level. We saw them warming up, Corey. They hit bubble screens, trips to the right, double stacks. Back to J.J. Jackson. He's been carrying the rock, but the Pillins defense stiffens up right there for about a two-yard pickup for Jackson. Outstanding job being double teamed by Kerry Rattler and Derek Godbolt, making sure they were not able to get that first down. It's going to bring up fourth and a long four yards to go. The ball sitting right at the 27-yard line of the Eagles. Keep in mind, cannot punt in middle school. And at this point, they can't walk off 30 yards. So it'll be fourth and short, as you said, Corey. So cause is going to go for it. I wouldn't be surprised whether you see a quarterback keeper or give it to number one here, or 16 rather, right. offensively. And we have some movement on the line. Blair is upset. For the snap, false start on the offense. Penalties five yards, still fourth down. Kevin Anders, our white hat tonight, is going to push the Tigers back five yards. Our rest of our officials, Brian Allred, Lance Crawford, Clyde Brown Jr., and Ron Morgan on the call here for this large school division middle school championship, our second one this evening. Congratulations to the Lot Wildcats. They won the small division game before this one. So they spread them out. Empty set here for the Tigers. Blair looking to throw pressure. He unleashes it. Intended for Jackson, but interrupted and knocked down, knocked out. So it's ball over on downs. The defense holds for Pillins. Great job. And you do look at the amount of clock that was burned. 155 wow. now remaining in the first quarter of action, only playing eight-minute quarters. That's right. So you're having an opportunity now for the Eagles to demonstrate what they can do offensively. But great ball control that comes up empty there for Causey. Take a look right here. How did Causey make it to this championship game? As I said, they lost one game, the first one to Williamson, 28 to 6. And then they ran off the rest of them. Two shutouts during the season last week in the semifinals. They beat Scarborough, who was the defending two-time middle school champion. So that was a big win for the Tigers there. First and 10 coming up for Pillins. They're going to hand it off. Going up the middle, nice run right there by the Eagles, Matthew McWilliams. Only 22 players on this roster for Coach Matt Moore. He calls them 22 strong, Corey. 22 strong is all he needs, and you'll have players playing both ways for both of these squads, but great positive yardage, a seven-yard gain on first down. Second and three. Hand off to Darrell Blackman. Pillins is going to run a multiple sets of offense tonight. It may be a wing tee, it could be a pro set, it could be a spread, it could be trips. Keep it right here, the action's headed your way. This offense averages 27.2 points a game, so they can light it up. Great coaching staff, Matthew Moore, Carlos Terry, and LaQuentin Blackman all assisting the head coach, Matthew Moore. So I, I think that when you look at the camaraderie of this 22 strong, sometimes that's beneficial. And Matthew Moore, the head coach of Pillins, wants an early timeout. Takes a timeout. 63 seconds remain here in the first quarter, and we're off to a quick start here 
And let's take a look at Pillins. How did they get to this point, Corey? Undefeated. We talked about it. 7-0 and on the season. They pitched four shutouts during the year as they blanked Washington, Chestang, also Sims last week in the championship. I'm sorry, the semifinals to get here. So this Pillins team can be very explosive. Look at that victory over Clark Shaw, 40-6. to Averaging 27.2 points per game offensively. So you know they can ring it up. And it's going to be interesting here to see if they can go ahead and have some type of ball control themselves because almost seven minutes taken off the clock early by Causey doesn't right. give you much time to have it in the first quarter. But when you do have it, you have to find a way to be efficient and effective. And we'll see if Rashad Miles, who is a very versatile player for Pillins, is able to get involved early. Number one in blue. We'll see how he's going to function tonight. And he is now lined up at quarterback. Miles throws. Pass complete. Pillins trying to get on the board. That is a touchdown from Rashad Miles to Derek Godbolt. 55, 55 yards. yards, Corey. Wow. And I talked about finding number one, where number one, Rashad Miles says, look, I can play wide receiver. I can play quarterback, a clean pocket. One step drop back is able to throw a perfect strike to Derek Godbolt. Godbolt shows his athleticism. His yards after catch are superb. We don't have an extra point. They are going to go for two here in middle school. So that's where you'll see a lot of these eight to zero scores. And right now they're going to see if they can convert. Miles with the carry trying to turn the edge. And he is pushed out of bounds. Six to nothing. Pillins on top on their first possession. 55 yard touchdown pass from Miles to Godbolt. There's a lot to like about Mobile County Public Schools. What I enjoy about Mobile County School is the extra attention my teachers give us to help us learn. Teachers are liking their access to technology and students are liking the quality of their education. I like the technology that's been incorporated into my education. And since 1826, you have trusted us to prepare your child for their future and we like that. Mobile County Public Schools, we are learning today, leading tomorrow. We welcome you back to the battlefield at Ben Glover Stadium. Corey Pillins took over with just over one minute in the first quarter, and in less than 30 seconds, they get on the board and score. That's all it takes, and you look at ball control here by Causey. We'll see if they're able to strike back as quick because the first drive took up almost six and a half minutes. Blair rolls out, going deep. He's got a guy way down waiting for it, hauling it in for the Tigers. Big play from Carson Blair to Gavin Vagison. Man, that really flips the field for the Tigers. Now they're in the red zone. That's what you have to see. Rashad Miles gets back and makes that stop. But what a great throw by the quarterback on the money. Didn't catch him in stride, but Blair Carson threw that accurately enough for his wide receiver to run under it. An explosive play, ball spotted right at the 21-yard line. That's a great answer for yep. a score. Now let's see if they're able to capitalize as this will be the last play of the first quarter if they stay in bounds. Direct snap to J.J. Jackson, and he goes around the left side, but he's upended right near the line of scrimmage. And you're right, Corey, that's probably going to be our last play. Causey trying to play hurry up, but I think they're just going to take their time as we're going to wrap up the end of the first quarter here. Six to nothing, Pillins on top. The action is getting good here in the large division middle school championship game. Got to send congratulations out to Lot Middle School. They won the 2023 
Middle School Volleyball Small Division Championship. So congratulations to the Lot Wildcats. And in the large division, got to send congratulations going out to Causey Middle School as they won the large division. Corey, and it's ironic, Causey's in the championship game for football. Lot won the championship game for football. Look, look at X just excelling at both of these schools in athletics. That's what you have to do athletically and academically. These schools yep. are superior in the Mobile County Public School System. And what you see here is great middle school athletes getting ready to start their high school careers. And some of these are seventh graders making phenomenal plays as well. But the type of crowd and turnout that you get for a middle school championship game in a beautiful brand new stadium here on the campus of BC Rain, you couldn't ask for a better weather day and a better environment for middle school championship football. Speaking of players, Causey dressing out 45 players of that 45 35 of them are eighth graders playing for this Tigers team. And, and they have some history. They won the title back in 2019. And on that team, two names that are familiar with us, Josh Flowers and Rod Taylor, were members of that middle school championship team for Causey back in 2019. Hand off to J.J. Jackson as he's wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. I think the turf monster got him too, Corey. Jaden Rembert from his defensive end position comes up and makes that stop. Great job by the seventh grader, part of this 22 strong for the Pillins Eagles. And it does put Mickey Orso in a difficult down and distance situation offensively. Third down and 13 yards to go for Causey. Line to gain is the 11 for the Tigers. They were down close earlier in the first quarter, but could not convert as that Pillins defense stiffened up on fourth down. Blair looking to pass, goes once again to his receiver, Camden Cazares. Not enough for the first down. It's going to be fourth down once again for the Tigers. Kerry Rattler comes up from his strong safety position. Look at the open field tackle. Just does a great job of going low and is able to get it. And now you see a fourth down and close to seven yards to go here, pushing the ball inside of the red zone area right around the 17-yard line. We'll see if Pillins is able to go ahead and get a huge momentum stop on fourth down now. Tigers break the huddle. Watch out in the slot, 16. Double receiver set. You're right about that, Jackson in the slot. Blair looking that way, pressure. He is sacked for a loss. It's turnover on downs as one of those 22 strong comes through. LaDarren Perkins from his Mike linebacker spy Corey. Does a great job Bam. coming from that middle linebacker position. Not even seen, and he's lucky to hold on to that football. Right. And you do have a turnover on downs, but now we'll see here. We saw the explosiveness moments ago of this Pillins Eagles offense. And you can watch out for Rashad Miles and once again, Derek Godbolt to be explosive here on offense. And if it's one-on-one -on -one matchups you want, it'll be one-on-one -on -one matchups you'll get. Pillins only touched the ball maybe three times in the first quarter and scored in the third play. Handoff up the middle with the carry. Darrell Blackman for Pillins picks up a couple. Second down and about eight coming up here. Positive yardage being gained on first down. Second and eight exactly, Al, and the ball is going to be spotted right around the Eagles' 29-yard line. Two-yard pickup on the carry right there for Blackman. Split backs there. I like the split backs. You have an opportunity to to dump it off or to run the ball like they are now. And they give it off. Nice run right there by Matthew McWilliams. Flag on the play, possibly a face mask. Flags all on the field. And anytime you see that bird cage tilt a little sideways, you know what you have, and that's an easy call for the officials to make. Kevin Anders signals right there. You may be able to catch it on the, on the replay. There it is. Turns around and is still able Personal to keep foul. running. Face mask on the defense. Penalties 15 yards from the end of the run, results in a first down. Great 
Work by a camera crew right there. Three flags on the play. So the Eagles are going to benefit from this first down. They're going to get into Tigers territory. They're going to spot this ball at the 44-yard line of Causey. And here it is now when you get into their territory. You mentioned how quickly they can strike. 529 remaining here in the first half of action. 529, our score 6-0. to zero. The Eagles trying to get on the scoreboard once again. Rattler waiting for the snap. Back there by himself. Man in motion. Across in the flat. Blackman couldn't hold on to it. He leaked out straight on the go route right up the middle, Corey. Comes from his fullback position Man. where he's naturally gifted and just was not able to hold on to that. And it almost really could have been an interception by Causey, but now you're at a second down and 10 yards to go for Pillins, and you do have a quarterback that can put it on the money and Rattler, and you have the explosiveness of the receivers also. Miles goes into motion. They throw it to him. Thought it was going to be a double pass. No blockers. He doesn't need blockers, Corey. He runs down the sidelines, does not step out as he's pushed out near the 25. Nice, nice pitch and catch right there from Rattler to Miles. Great job of Rattler catching a high snap and getting it to his playmaker, Miles, and Miles does the rest, able to gain a first down right at the 25-yard line now, and Pillins trying to knock on the red zone area with five minutes here remaining in the second quarter with that 6-0 to lead, and you see the athletes 22 strong for the Eagles. Direct snap to Rashad Miles. Runs around the block from Gobbo, set by Gobbo, turns the corner on the edge as he is forced out of bounds inside of the red zone near the 15, I believe. Look at the stiff arm here wow. on this replay. He just has great strength, upper body strength, and is able to secure the football. And he stiffs on with his left hand and just continues to gain positive yardage out of that wildcat formation. And that's a great dynamic that Coach Moore does have where he can go carry Rattler at quarterback or Rashad Miles to get the same type of positive results. First and 10 for the Eagles. Ball's on the 15 yard line. They can pick up a first down without getting a touchdown. The line to gain is the five. Hand off to Blackman on the carry. Picks up a few, maybe two or three. Brings up second down for Pillins. And Blackman, traditionally the fullback, you look at Blackman's size, 6'1", 175 pound eighth grader, runs upright, but still has a lot of length and strength to his body frame. Now it's gonna be second and seven in the red zone area for the Eagles. Ball's at the 12 yard line. Clock continues to tick as we are under four minutes and 30 seconds remaining here in the first half. Corey, you right, those eight minutes go by quick, man. Hand off, McWilliams with the carry. Around the edge he goes, hits pay dirt. That's a touchdown, 12-yard score for Matthew McWilliams as Pillins extends the lead. Matthew McWilliams, the eighth grader, 5'3", 133 pounds, bounces to the outside. Look at the block that he gets from number one down the field, secures that edge. Miles with the block down the field, and it's going to be six more for the Pillins Eagles as they lead 12-0 with a two-point conversion pending. Direct snap to Rashad Miles as he turns the corner, hits the edge. And the try is good, so the score is 14 nothing. Pillins on top, and this is the perfect time to bring the principal for Pillins on to the camera with us. Principal Roberson, Joseph Roberson is on the line with us. Principal Roberson, you guys are up 14 to nothing right now. How you feeling? Man, we, f we feel really great on DIP and really blessed to be here today. Very proud of all of our student athletes and our coaches. Undefeated season so far. Talk about the excitement 
in Eagle Land over there at Pillins. Man, I tell you, with a team like this, it really evokes a, a sense of pride. Uh, it, it has instilled so many different uh, positive characteristics throughout our school. We use our football players as, as ambassadors and uh, ment uh, peer mentors for others. 22 strong, only 22 players on the team, but that shows a lot of faith and determination. It doesn't matter the numbers. I guess it's the size of the heart. They are very resilient to be able to play on both sides, and most of them, believe it or not, they are A-B honor roll students, and so it speaks volumes to our family dynamic and also our school dynamic. Well, Principal Robeson, we congratulate you, congratulates to you making it to this championship game, and keep up the great work you're doing uh, right here on the dip at Palmer Pillar. Well, we appreciate it, and thank you guys for everything you do to make sure that we're covered. All right, thank you so much. Causey with the ball right now, 3.39, and the clock ticking, Corey. Right now, Pillin's pitching a shutout. J.J. Jackson with the carry flags coming in. That one thrown by the white hat, and that's going to be a late call as well. Jackson not on the carry right there. Actually on the carry, number 15 for Causey. And what you'll see, Ashton Tucker. what you'll wind up seeing is offsetting. Because you're going right. to have the holding, Correct. and then you're going to have the late hit. And, yeah, it was out of bounds a little late. It was late, sure. Corey. <laughs> but the early flag for holding definitely was there. So now the official crew Here's the will, replay. They'll There's gather the hole and talk right about it. And you do look at, as soon as he gets into the white paint area, you can let him go, and you drive him to the ground. And that's an easy call for Brian Allred to make there on the sidelines that was to our, make sure we don't our have touchdown score Matthew McWilliams yes <laughs> yes <laughs> laying the late the late wood there Corey and, and you, you just have to be careful in that situation and we'll see here if you decide to walk one off and then walk the other one off where the ball will be spotted and replay second down during the play we have holding on the offense that penalty be enforced 10 yards from the spot of the foul after the play was over, we have a personal foul, late hit out of bounds on the defense. That penalty would be assessed, 15 yards, replay second down. So they're going to walk them off just like you said, Corey. And we're going to end up with the ball spotted at the 41-yard line. So it was a net gain of four yards for Causey, having some audio difficulties right now. There we go, I believe we're back. So. Second and about four here coming up. Ball's at the 41 for Causey. Well, you know that Causey definitely loves to find J.J. Jackson, and that's number 16 in white. And he, again, we mentioned in the first quarter, he can flat out fly, but 324 remaining here in the second quarter, trailing 12 to zero. Causey wants to find some good offense right here. You see Blair Carson has a great arm and accuracy also. Give it to Jackson. He tries to turn the edge. Boom, boom. The Eagles all on him as they blow him up right at the line of scrimmage. Tristan McDonald does a phenomenal job of finishing that tackle. The middle linebacker, he's an eighth grader, five foot, 127 pounds. And now you're looking at, once again, a third down and close to five yards to go for Causey. We've seen Causey have several third downs here in the first half. Right. And in the first quarter, they were able to capitalize and run almost six minutes of the clock. Here in the second quarter, they still have ball control, but now they're at third and five. Will they roll the dice if they don't get it? Ball sitting right at the 40-yard line in front of us here at Bean Glover Stadium. Jackson goes out. And pass appears to be intercepted by Pillins. Coming down with that interception, I believe that's Derek Godbold, Corey. It is Derek Godbold. He drops back into coverage and is able to intercept Blair Carson. Two blue defenders, three blue defenders swarming to the football. The Eagles are flying high after that turnover. And now we'll see if head coach Matthew Moore is able to capitalize and get points off of turnovers here in the first half of this large division middle school championship for the Mobile County Public School System. 2.29 remaining here in the first half. Matthew Moore calls plays as offense coordinator and defense does get some assistance on the offense from LaQuinton Blackman. Blackman is also the girls basketball coach and the girls track coach as well. 
Blackman goes into motion. Daryl Blackman, and we have, I believe, encroachment on the defense. Or was that a false start? Let's see. Well, I know Carlos Terry. He's living he down there. He is court. upset on I mean, the yeah. sidelines. And Carlos Terry putting in a lot of work. Saw him last year on the sidelines with Coach Moore as well. So they have a great cohesive coaching well, staff. False start on the offense. Penalties five yards, three play, still first down. And that explains why Terry was hot. Pillins loses five yards. First and 15 from their own 41. This can be an explosive offense, as I've said, averaging 27.2 points per game. A little end around right there as they get the ball to Rashad Miles. And speaking of end around, he goes around the end. Cause is going to tackle him near the 20 yard line. Corey, one play, but unfortunately, a flag's right here on the 40 yard line in front of us. And we'll see if they do have the first down first after the penalty. You look at it, the area of holding right around where the flag was located, and the officials will gather and talk and see if we're going to go ahead and reset the sticks. But you do see that number one in blue. He is definitely a baller, folks. Rashad Miles, remember that name. This is the future of high school football moving forward in You're Mobile right. County. 22 strong on the team of that 22. 16 are eighth graders for Pillin, so that is truly a majority. Only six, seven graders on this team, and that's going to wipe out that run. Let's get the call from We have an illegal formation on the offense. Penalties five yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. And head coach Matthew Moore calling in the signals to his quarterback, Rattler, and reassuring Rashad Miles what he can do to, to get open here for this Eagles offense. And all you have to do, if you have an opportunity here, Rattler, you have seen the speed of Rashad Miles. Correct, so correct. It's very easy if you're not having any type of press coverage or putting a corner there 10 yards off of him for him to go up and have the height advantage also. So we'll see here at first and close to 22 yards to go for Pillins, whether they decide to go to the air or not. Line to gain is the 49 of Causey. Al Whedon, Corley Bounty on the call here for this large school middle division championship game. Earlier, Lot won the small division. And you're tuned in to Causey versus Pillins. Causey comes in at 6 and 1, Pillins 7 and 0 on the season. And officials are still talking. I don't know if they're discussing the spot. Don't know if they said it was a ten, formation. Right. I thought it was a five-yard penalty myself, Corey, but they took it back 10 yards. I thought the ball would have been what they're trying to do at is the make 36. sure they have the yard markers. Maybe correct, that's it. On the far sidelines down in distance wise. So they're coming up a bit. They're coming up to the 34. So maybe they walked off a bit too much. So the line to gain is going to be the 46-yard line First and of 20. Causey. And this ball is sitting at the 34. First and 20, and you do look at the top of your screen. You do have Rashad Miles there available for Rattler to throw it to as he has a 10-yard cushion being given by the corner. Gobbo goes into motion. They give it to him. He's tackled for a loss. Tigers all over him. And what you were looking for is some type of pass. It right. looked like right there they were going to set up Godbolt passing the ball to Miles, but the penetration of this Causey defense did a great job of disrupting it. Michael Williams on the stop there for Causey to disrupt the timing of the trick play that was going to be called, but great job of Causey getting into the backfield and now causing a second down and close to 27 yards to go. Gobbo to the left of Rattler in the backfield. I'm sorry, Rashad Miles, he's just going to go behind the blocking of Gobbo, cuts it up the middle. Rashad Miles still running, still running, 20, 10, Touchdown, Pillins. 
Rashad Miles hits pay dirt for the Eagles. Well, when you have number one, I just mentioned his explosiveness. You can see it all. Great job by the offensive line, giving him an opportunity. You have Mosley, Vines, Godfrey, Pritchard, Tucker, and Walker getting it done for Mr. Miles. Mr. Miles soars high and finds Pater six more for Pillins taking the 20-0 lead. 66-yard touchdown for Rashad Miles. Pretty much with that direct snap right to him. So very impressive, his speed, but better job by the offensive line making sure no penalties. Direct snap to Rattler, and the try is good. I'll score 22 to nothing. Hillens all in control here at 1 minute 11 seconds left in the first half here. Hillens all in control. 22 to 0, and you do see a great job of Pillins holding the blocks and making sure that they did not commit penalties because they were behind the sticks. They were. You were looking at a down a distance of close to 28 yards to go, and they didn't need it because you see number one hit pay dirt. Let's check in with Jason Smith, principal over at Causey Middle School. Principal Smith, congratulations with your Tigers making it to the championship game. Having some audio difficulty, so we'll try to check in with him shortly here. One minute, 11 seconds remaining in the first half. Pillins all in control, and the Eagles faithful going wild here at Ben Glover Stadium. First to 10 for Causey at 35. What has to happen is 16 has to get involved, and 75 is chasing them to make sure. Big 75 for <laughs> Pillins. Jonathan Pritchard says, look, from my defensive tackle position, I'm 272. If I can <laughs> right. get into the backfield, you're not going to get any positive traction going, being able to run downhill. And Pillins has done a great job of on first and second down, making it very difficult for Causey to have nothing but third and long coming up. This one's going to be second and 17. Blair takes the snap, looking to go deep. He's got a guy. Mick Williams interrupts it, and the flag comes in. That's going to be P.I. against Pillins as they were trying to connect with Gavin Vangiusen once again. Mick Williams may have gotten there a bit too early, Core. And that's one way that you go ahead and go from second and close to 17 to having a pass interference call that will allow you to get some of that free yardage. And you do look, though, 27.9 seconds remaining here in the second quarter of action. They do have all three timeouts remaining to cause the Tigers. Pass interference on the defense. Penalty 15 yards from the previous spot, results in a first down. Causey trying to get this goose egg off the board. You're right, Corey, 27.9 seconds. You can see the arm of Blair right there. That one just kind of hung up in the night air here at Ben Glover Stadium. First to 10 for the Tigers. They hand it off to J.J. Jackson. Correction, that's not Jackson. That is Ashton Tucker. That five and six is giving me fits tonight, Corey. Hey, that's all right. When you have tight rosters, that's exactly what happens. But it's a great job of Tucker doing a good job of, of bouncing to the outside, and you're going to have to burn a timeout Got a here flag. if there's no flag, and yep, you're going to have there. that holding. holding. Holding on the off. Only 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. And Causey can't get out of their own way here with penalty flags that are creating long down and distance situations for the Tigers. And 28 point seconds remaining here in the second quarter of action, trailing 22 to zero. What you want to try to make sure that you're able to do here is not let anything get behind you if you're the Eagles. And Pillins will get the ball first in the second half. Hand off right there for the Tigers. That's going to be our last play of the first half if no one calls a timeout. And I think we do have a timeout called on the field. Let's check in with Principal Jason Smith. I think we got the audio taken care of. Principal Smith, congratulations on your Tigers making it to the championship game. How's everyone loving it out there in Causey Land? I appreciate it. Yeah, we've, we've had a great year. Our guys have worked really hard. 
uh, proud of them and our coaches um, do a great job with our guys. And speaking of coaches, your head coach, Tim Miller, has been there 16 years. He's definitely a committed Tiger with the program, but backed up by Mickey Orso and also by his defense coordinator, Joseph Thornton. This is a tight bunch. They've been together for a while, Principal. They sure have, and uh, they, they bring our kids up during the summer and uh, work really hard with them. They lift weights, and uh, guys do a great job, so I'm proud of them along with our players. We got to say congratulations to you. Uh, your girls' volleyball team, they won the championship, and now your boys in the championship. I think folks are happy out there at Causey right now, aren't they? Yeah, we've had a great start to our school year. Our uh, archery team also, they were world champions this past uh, summer, and they've started their year off. Volleyball team uh, defeated a great Phillips team that was undefeated over at their place in three sets. And football team uh, lost the first game, but we've won five in a row, so we're, we're uh, doing well over there. All right, Principal Smith, we appreciate you taking out time. Maybe the second half, things might turn out a little better for your Tigers, all right? Thank you, thank you all you do for us. Uh, all right, interception on the play. That break. appears to be the last play of the first half. Mick Williams on the tip drill, Corey, here's the replay. That's a backbreaker, great job of batting the ball up and not down, allowing you to get under it. And that is a house call for Matthew McWilliams. As I don't know who was running faster, whether it was Matthew Moore down the <laughs> sidelines, at least he didn't have the flag thrown on him out of excitement. We saw in the first game right. a penalty flag being thrown as a coach ran into the official. But Matthew Moore knew that once the ball was popped up in the air, his guy was going to get under it. Six more points scored here for a huge yes. momentum killer. If it, It's a Brack Baker backbreaker earlier there if you're looking at this 28 to 0 the two-point conversion is pending as no time is left on the clock here as we are going to end the first half of action gotta have the try here before the first half comes to a conclusion Corey I had just ripped off my my note paper as I was wrapping up the interview and I couldn't even jot down Matthew McWilliams it happened so quick the try appears to be no good, so our score at halftime is 28 to nothing. I mean, literally, I had ripped my papers there, Corey, so unbelievable. What an interesting second quarter we've had here. Keep it right here. We're going to bring you some cheerleaders and also let you see that LOTC video as well at halftime. Pillars on top, 28 to nothing. Do you feel alone, overwhelmed, or helpless? There's hope, there's hope. Call or text 988. You don't have to face your crisis alone. If you need a safe space to talk with a trusted adult for support, reach out to your school counselor. Do you need help to make it through everyday struggles? Do you need someone to talk to? Call or text 988. Your social emotional wellness is worth it. Remember, there's hope, there's help. We welcome you back to Ben Glover Stadium. We're going to take it down to the field and watch the cheerleaders from Palmer Pillins Middle School.
the Palmer Billings cheerleaders. Right now, we want to let you see that Mobile County Public Schools is the first school district in Alabama to offer the Leadership Officer Training Corps Program, or LOTC. The program is offered to middle schoolers in grades 6 through 8. The LOTC focuses on character, discipline, and leadership. Here is more on the LOTC program. Hello, my name is Andy Bennett. I am the owner and president of Interactive Learning and the co-creator of the Chisel 365 Leadership Curriculum and Technology. For the last 20 years, I've been working in the schools and with our nation's JROTC programs. I was asked to give a real quick uh, interview and answer a few questions about our Chisel 365 curriculum. So first question was, why did we see a need for this program? Kind of back to the name here, character, health and fitness, interactive service and leadership. That's what we were trying to deliver. We found that um, the high school was too late. It was too late to uh, wait for high school to, to get these students in this program that's, that could change the course of their life, give them identity, give them a hope for a, a bright future. So we needed to create that earlier on and, and catch those kids, get them with healthy habits and um, communicating better, just becoming better citizens and better leaders. Detachment, attention. The Cadet Creed. The Cadet Creed. I am Leadership and Character Development Corps Cadet. I always know. The way it works, the way it's supposed to work, is a program we, we invite the middle kids to, to come in and, and, and to be a part of the program. Because we figure like this, you know, a lot of kids, a lot of middle school kids come in and they either join band or they go to PE because they want to be athletic. But you still have those kids who, who, who don't want to be in band and they know there's not going to be athletes. So we, we, we recruit those kids so we can put them in the leadership program because we know leadership is something that they can use for the rest of their lives. And those kids that we bring in who are non-athletes, non-athletes, are the ones who stay in the program all the way through. You know, even, even though in the seventh grade they can become athletes, a lot of them come back once, once their season is over. So the, the great thing is that we capture them, we teach them how to team build, we have fun activities for them, and they, and they want to stay. Well, the first thing it does, it, it offers them a place in the school. It is a program built for any and every student. Every student can find their place in LOTC. Every student will evolve into something greater. They do this program. It brings good out of them, brings the confidence out of them, skills out of them. It's a program that's, that's built for all students. When I was in the program, I didn't really think much of it. I thought it was just another fun program to be in, but the longer I stood in it, I really realized how much it highlighted leadership skills, and that really made me want to stay. So in life, it made me reach out to more people. It made me connect with others that I wouldn't normally talk to. It made me build relationships with instructors, and they have helped me throughout school. I could not see any reason that you would not have an LOTC in every middle school. If you have football, if you have band, if you have the arts, why would you not offer this leadership program um, in alignment with those other groups? When you search for leadership programs, we've looked high and low. There, there's not a lot out there for something that I have seen with the return on investment. Um, I, I don't know what it even costs to start up an LOTC program because we've always had it, but I know that we wouldn't do without it. And just recently, we're looking at budget cuts and no one's looking to cut out LOTC, but it's the foundation of our culture. And we have a culture of high expectations where young men are developed into real world leaders. And that's what LOTC has provided for us. It, uh, it really helps kiddos with um, just leadership opportunities. Um, we are also an international baccalaureate school, and so we use that as what we call a design course. And so kiddos learned, uh, learn a lot of different qualities in, um, within the program, you know, in terms of leadership and how they can become better people, um, better citizens. Um, and so all our sixth grade students take LOTC, 
um, seventh grade is an elective and eighth grade is an elective as well. The program absolutely works. It absolutely works. Um, we started off, like I said, we started off with, uh, with one. When I got here, they put, they put three more in once I got here. And now we're up to 15. And more schools all over Texas. We got, we got 20, 20 programs in Fort Worth. We got 29 in Dallas. We got 15 up in Houston. We got another five uh, uh, on the outskirts of San Antonio. So we got about 85 programs in Texas alone. Absolutely it works. As, as the rate is growing, we'll be bigger than JRTC in the next five years. You're watching the MCPSS Middle School Football Championship game. Did you know that missing two days of school per month has a negative effect on student achievement and that chronic absenteeism is negatively impacting one out of every 10 Alabama students. Studies show students who are chronically absent are more likely to drop out of school. For every one day your child is absent from school, it takes three days for them to catch up. So if I am not sick, make sure I'm at school because missing school means missing out. A teacher is one of the biggest investors in a community. They impact the lives of those we value the most. Teachers share knowledge which helps shape and mold our future leaders. Teachers show direction and help build a sense of purpose. Are you ready to make a change? For more information on teaching opportunities, teacher incentives, or to apply with the Mobile County Public Schools, log on to www.mcpss.com. Our children with special needs deserve a place to play. That is why we are coming together to build the Miracle League of West Mobile Schmidt Family Park. It will include a special needs ball field and playground, regulation baseball and softball fields, and more. We have raised more than $1 million and construction will start soon, but we need your help to complete the project. Visit mcpss.com slash Miracle League to donate and to learn more. Any dollar amount will help bring a smile to a child's face. Together, we can make a miracle. We welcome you back to the battlefield at Ben Glover Stadium. And quite a battle Pillins is putting up right now, Corey, on top 28 to nothing over Causey. Now, this is the large division championship. A lot of people are wondering, how did, how did Pillins get into this championship? Their, their enrollment is really kind of on the lower end compared to Causey, one of the largest middle schools in the state of Alabama, Corolla Bounty. And they only have 22 players, up 28 points right now. Yeah, I mean, you look at that last interception as time expired, and you just have the ball tipped, and it took a fortuitous bounce right into Mr. McWilliams' hands, and he was able to make that house call. But once again, in middle school football, eight-minute quarters is what we play. Right. No special teams kickoffs. The ball's automatically spotted at the 35-yard line, so the Eagles take over at their own 35-yard line, trying to add to this 28-0 score. And I had said it sometime during the second quarter, but that interception pick six happened so quick it's almost as if Pillins is getting a two for one because they get the ball back here first in the second half. Hand off to Matthew McWilliams. We've called his name a few times tonight. He had that pick six score. And you go back to the first quarter of action to where Causey had the football for some five and a half minutes. Right. And in three plays, I do believe Pillins was able to explode and score in less than 45 seconds. And now they've exploded on the scoreboard and are up 28 to zero. And you do look at the 22 strong. So far this season, this is the fifth interception by this defense wow. that was on and taken to the house. They've already, this is their second touchdown defensively that they've had, over 16 sacks, and now they're trying to capitalize on this offense. Low snap, second and eight. Picking that ball up right off the carpet and taking it up the middle. Nice run right there by Rattler to save that play. Well, you look at only 40 points scored the entire season right. against this Eagle team. And 
now they have already scored 200 and close to 30 points on the year. Third and about four coming up here for Pillins. A high snap over the head of Rattler. And Causey just falls on it. I think Pillins thought maybe they were going to blow the play dead, maybe like a middle school rule. But no, that was a live ball. As our white hat Kevin Anders signals, high snap right there. And Rattler just kind of gave up on it, as Blackman did as well. Well, you do look at Michael Williams, the Sam linebacker, not giving it up on Causey's defensive end, the effort is there, and now you're looking at the best field position of the night right at the 29-yard line of the Pillins Eagles. It's just what the doctor ordered. Now, what they also need right here is to find a way to get 16 involved, and that 16 in white is J.J. Jackson, whether it's from a receiving standpoint or a running standpoint. We see the speed of the Eagles, but we also have seen the speed of Jackson. Just to the left of Carson Blair stands J.J. Jackson. They give it to him, and he is stopped behind the line of scrimmage, blown up by Pillins. Great job of Ladarian Perkins once again coming up from his defensive position, absolutely laying a great hit. A solo tackle for this young man. Pillins leading 28 to zero, and you look at a two yard loss on the play. Shot the gap. That's what Perkins did. Second and 12 here for the Tigers. They may be trying to lull Pillins. J.J. Jackson takes it out wide, just past the hash, picks up about seven or eight. It's gonna be third and short coming up for the Tigers. And what you see is Bridges, the corner, come down, 5'3", 114 pounds, be able to close. And we do have an injury for the Causey Tigers. Jackson got up a bit slow. He was limping and on the field writhing right now is a Causey Tiger. Looks to be number seven for them. We'll take a break on this injury timeout and be back. There's a lot to like about Mobile County Public Schools. What I enjoy about Mobile County School is the extra attention my teachers give us to help us learn. Teachers are liking their access to technology and students are liking the quality of their education. I like the technology that's been incorporated into my education. And since 1826, you have trusted us to prepare your child for their future and we like that. Mobile County Public Schools. We are learning today, leading tomorrow. Hey Alexa, tell me about Mobile County Public Schools. With 53,000 students in 90 schools, Mobile County Public Schools equips and empowers college and career-ready graduates. Several MCPSS schools are ranked among Alabama's top 10. Yearly, graduating students earned about $110 million in college scholarships and 10,000 career credentials. MCPSS is learning today, leading tomorrow. Does that answer your question? Up the middle goes Carson Blair on the third down carry. Not enough to secure the first down. It's going to be fourth and short here for the Tigers. Maybe about fourth and a full yard, Corey. Well, trailing 28 to zero, you're definitely going to roll the dice. And you know there's no special teams play, so no punt. Because when you do spot it, there's a 30-yard punt in grace that is given. And when you're in the red zone area, right. you have no choice but to go for it. And here it is. You hear the... The drums banging here on the Pillins stand sidelines as they're encouraging the defense to stand up. Causey here with a huge play, looking at fourth and one now. Looks like the line of gain is the 19. This is about a one and a half because the ball is just on the other side of the 20. Up the middle goes Blair. He's going to get that first down. Keeps the legs going. Let's see where his forward progress is. Tigers inside the red zone. They're going to spot it at about the 12 yard line. Corey Walker on the stop, 5'7", 189 pound, eighth grader, and does a great job, but an even better job of Blair Carson just following his mammoth offensive line and moving forward, getting that fresh set of downs in the red zone area. The 12 yard line of the Eagles, the deepest that Causey has been. That offensive line averages 208 pounds across the front. Offensive coordinator Mickey Orso, there's the jump pass. They set him up, they lured him into it. 12-yard touchdown pass from Carson Blair to 
Chris Frazier. Second time tonight we've seen the jump pass, and that's an outstanding execution in the red zone area. And you do look at the pass thrown on the money from a jump pass situation, and just great execution by Causey in the red zone area. You think it's going to be a run, and you just allow that defender to trickle behind the defense, and right. now they're going to go for two. But the first time getting on the board, 28 to 6, our new score. Causey avoids the shutout with the score. Blair up the middle. And the try is good. Our score 28 to 8. We'll take a break and be back. What's the matter, baby? You're not feeling good? School-aged children are at a higher risk of getting and spreading germs and viruses. To help protect the spread, students are encouraged to stay home when sick. Parents, it's important for your child to remain at home at least 24 hours after they no longer have a fever of 100 degrees or higher without the use of medications. Please help us maintain a healthy learning environment. At Mobile County Public Schools, we are learning today, leading tomorrow. And this year, we want our teachers to aim for excellence. Both of these teams trying to be excellent and get a championship win tonight. That's a fumble on the ground. Rashad Miles is hit, and the ball pops out, recovered by Causey. And the Causey faithful go wild, Corey. You can kind of sense the momentum shifting in this ball game. Looked like it was going to be another trick play, maybe some type of reverse in action, and was not been able to be handed off, but a great defensive play by the Tigers being super duper aggressive and getting their claws out and scratching and clawing back into this game and are going to be right back in excellent field position, right back close to the red zone area. Right outside of it, they're going to officially spot it at the 32-yard line. But you and I both know when you have an uncle named Mo yep. and he shows up to the game, sometimes what you have is Uncle Mo taking over. And we'll see if the momentum can be established by Causey 16 and one, the key factors offensively. Second fumble tonight, second turnover, direct snap to JJ Jackson. Hillens with two turnovers tonight. He's tackled right behind the line of scrimmage. Points off turnovers, we've seen Hillens be able to have six points off of those turnovers that interception right at the half. And here it is now, we'll see if the Tigers are able to capitalize is there's going to be an injury timeout yeah, for Causey. That's not a good look. That's J.J. Jackson, Corey. Cramp. And yes, it is October the 19th, but the weather has gotten a bit, a little warmer the past day or two. So no surprise with the cramps here affecting a few players tonight. We saw it in the previous ball game, Braylon Williams Scored a touchdown and came right off the field with a cramp. Corey. And he was limping to the bus with the championship trophy for a lot middle school who is undefeated. And you do look at if you're not properly hydrated with 70 degrees, it can definitely right. happen to you. October is observed as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We had on our pink last week and a lot of players and folks in the stands, even the Pillins cheerleaders have on pink tonight in observance of Breast Cancer Awareness Month for the month of October. So. Jackson heads on off the field. They're going to have to replace him. It's going to be second and about 12 coming up. Ball at the 34-yard line. Can the Tigers get more points off turnovers? And what you have to do is just see number one take over Carson Blair. He's the general. And we'll see give what it he's to able to do. Ashton Tucker with the carry. And Pillen's just going to force him to the numbers right there. But we have a flag on the play. And once again, Matthew McWilliams has been very active tonight, coming up from his corner position, having and demonstrated great open field tackles. And we'll see if this is going to cause Causey from a holding During standpoint. The play, holding on the offense. Penalties 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay second down. So not a spot foul, but 10 yards from the previous spot. So that's going to push it back to about the 44, I believe. And 
Now what you're looking at, so Al, It's going to be, what, second and about 22, I believe, Corey. When, when you're behind the sticks right here and your leader offensively goes out with cramps, you have to find a way, Jordan Jackson not being in there, for number one to take over, and no more penalties needed for Causey. And I believe Causey is going to call a timeout right here with 2.55 remaining in the third quarter. We'll take a break as well. Pillins on top, 28 to eight, trying to hold on to this lead, not give up any more points off that bumble. High school students, are you looking for a way to become a better leader? Then the Junior Officers Training Corps may be what you're seeking. If you would like to develop self-reliance, learn ways to be more responsible, and improve your communication skills, you can do that and more when you register for the Junior Officers Training Corps. The JROTC program is available to all high school students in Mobile County. JROTC, we build a better you. Mobile County Public Schools, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and X, formerly known as Twitter, Mobile County Public Schools. We are learning today, leading tomorrow. Corey, are you still Corey the Bounty on X or Y or yeah, Z? Yeah, I stay. Or, <laughs> you didn't Twitter. change, did you? I did not okay, change. Okay. Still I just want to check. the Bounty, but it, it's just weird <laughs> calling it X instead of Twitter at times. It is weird. Second and long coming up here for the Tigers. Switch to more of a spread formation, trying to pass it. Blair flush to the left side, and he's going to be sacked outside the numbers. Look at the 22 strong coming together for Pillars. Mr. Norris comes up from his free safety position, 5'4", 116 pounds, seventh grader with a great open field tackle. And it just, again, now brings it third and forever for the Causey Tigers, and they just have to keep clawing. Now, remember, no special teams here, no right. punting or kickers. So if they decide and are not able to convert here on third down, it'll be a 30-yard punt, turnover on downs to where you'll mark it off 30 yards from where the line of scrimmage is. So a big-time play up coming for both of these teams, defensively, offensively, Causey trying to scratch back into this. I said it in the first game, only fair I see it now. Third and a country mile for the Tigers. Blair takes the snap, got a man in the middle, incomplete as he tried to get it to Camden Casares. And the Pillins Tigers were all around it, Gore. Yeah, you I mean, Pillins Eagles. You, you do look at the Eagles soaring high. Daryl Blackman deflects that one away, but it was a great opportunity and a great route, just a little bit better defense. And this is where you don't have a punter and you do take it 30 yards from that line of scrimmage and it will be first and 10 pillings and now you look at it 152 remaining here in the third quarter of action and the clock is a factor for pillings having the lead you saw them turn the football over on their last possession right and now they're trying to capitalize here no points off of turnovers for causey in that situation just too many penalties but We'll see if the Eagles are able to find a way to get things done here offensively without turning the ball over. Well, Corey, I think I can say it. If I think correctly, this may be our first non-punt of this ball game. Yeah, both of these teams are pretty much gone for it tonight on fourth down. Rolled the dice, both these teams, and we haven't seen a lot of fourth down situations, but you do have Rashad Miles there at quarterback, and we've seen his blazing speed here. We'll see if he's able to get past the line of scrimmage and go beep beep. High snap to Miles. He rolls out, gonna keep it. He's securing that pigskin as he is tackled out of bounds near the 32 yard line. That's enough, he picks up the first down about 11 yards on that carry. Stays in bounds until he's pushed there, but he does secure that first down and Matthew Moore on the sidelines imploring his offense to make sure that they execute offensively the play that he's calling in. But you do look at another first down where the clock is continuing to run, and the ball is going to be spotted right at the 32-yard line of Pillins. Rattler in the backfield with Miles. Miles goes down the middle. Matthew McWilliams hauls it in right near the midfield stripe at the 49. Miles threw a bullet. Mac Williams showing he has great hands with the interception earlier taken to the house, now turns into the wide receiver. And they normally say 
when you are playing defense, you have not great hands, but when That's you play true. both ways, this That's young true. man comes up with a tremendous catch, moves the sticks first and 10, right at the 49-yard line of Causey. Rattler back at quarterback now. Oh, handed it off to Blackman. Intercepted. Intercepted. And it was intercepted in mid-flight right there doing the handoff. That's the third turnover tonight for Pillen. And that's one thing that I know Matthew Moore is not going to be happy about. Jackson Williams, Johnny on the spot, is able to come away with the flying pigskin. I didn't know pigs could fly, but that <laughs> pigskin went airborne and back-to-back -back turnovers. We'll see if Causey, they're doing a great job defensively, but we'll see if the offense here with 30.5 seconds could put a dent in this 28-8 lead that the Pillins Eagles has. Pillins went into halftime pitching a shutout. Since then, Causey has scored one touchdown off of a turnover. They missed out on the last fumble. Let's see if they can capitalize right here and get points off turnovers. They will be two for three tonight. And Al, you do see J.J. return, number 16 in white, does come back into the contest. They give him the rock. He falls forward for about a yard. Cramps up once again. Tripped up, and you can see him kind of cramping right there on that carry cord. Look at him limping. And that's tough to come back from because, you know, you have to hydrate 48 and 24 hours prior to it. The old saying is give him some pickle juice <laughs> on the sidelines or give him some mustard to sit and consume. But right here now, a one-yard gain, second and nine with the ball right at the 44-yard line is that's going to be the last play of and the third quarter. And that is the quarter. last play of the third quarter. We're going to take a break and come back and bring you the deciding quarter. Pillins on top by 20. Thank you. You're welcome. Ayla, hi. Oh, hi, Sierra. How are you? Good. How are things? Things couldn't be better. What do you mean? Well, I just started this new job as a school teacher with the Mobile County Public Schools, and it has been a life changer. Great benefits, the hours are great, and great students. Just the overall, it's a great opportunity. Oh, wow, that sounds great. Yeah. I'm going to look into that. You should. For more information, visit mcpss.com slash job opportunities. We are back here at Ben Glover Stadium, a.k.a. the Battlefield. Corey, I've been talking to Randy Kennedy and Ben Thomas later. They want to call it the rainforest. I don't think that's aggressive enough. I told them, oh. when you look at this new mascot that BC Rain has, the, the, the big hulking work guy with the, the muscles and the crest on the arm and that, that oil rim, that looks like the battlefield. It doesn't look like yeah, the rainforest. I, the rainforest, there were more trees in this area. I could see yeah, it, yeah, but, yeah. but not a lot of trees down here on the parkway. Yeah, the dip yeah. is where we are located here in Mobile, Alabama. But I will say this, it is a beautiful brand new stadium that beautiful. is here for the BC Rain Red Raiders. And we've had a game here before. We'll have one here tomorrow night with the LaFleur Rattlers sure we'll be visiting this a great of the, Red Raiders team. The Eagle right there for Palmer well, Pillars. They're flying high they're right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> flying and the, high. and the Eagle saw that it was on camera and waved to Leon down there. <laughs> Second down coming up here for Causey. It is the fourth quarter. They're down 20 points. They've got to get it into gear quick if they want to capture this second championship for their head coach. Tim Miller, he won the championship back in 2019. And speaking of championships, Matt Moore won it in 2017, Core. Yeah, Matt Moore, again, does a tremendous job with these young men. And you do look at his accomplishment as a head coach. and. We'll continue to talk about all his successes as he coaches multiple sports for Palmer Pillins as well and has done a tremendous job this year keeping this team undefeated. Third down and 10 coming up for Causey. Blair flushed out the pocket, pressure's on him. The Eagles are all around him as they're trying to bring him down and prevent him from picking up the first down, and they do. 
as he gets up to the 39-yard line. And what you do see is them continuing to rip at the football. You look at Corey Walker, number 28, trying to tug away, play that can opener game, and trying to rip it away, rip it away, and not able to do so. So great job and ball security by the Causey Tigers, keeping it high and tight to the body, making sure they do not turn it over. But you're now looking at a critical fourth down and four yards to go for Causey. Trailing 28 to 8 out. They do have two timeouts remaining. Cause it going for it. Got the big jumbos flanking Bart. Carson Blair and a timeout called by Tim Miller. Had to take them down to one timeout. 626 remaining here in the contest. And by no means can you say it's over. Three turnovers committed by Pillins tonight, something that's that uncharacteristic for the Eagles. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely uncharacteristic of what you're seeing, seeing by Palmer Pillins. But, you know, their opponents are only averaging 6.6 .6 points per game, and you do look at them having eight tonight, and that's a huge difference maker so far. But being able to have points off of turnovers, to me, that's even – What's more important, the lack thereof, points off turnovers right. for Causey. Something Coach Moore told me, this keys to success, had to have no turnovers and win the battle and match up personnel. They've kind of matched up personnel, but right now they're losing the turnover battle three to one. And they've had two fumbles and one interception tonight for the Eagles. But this is a critical play right here. Corey, as you like to call it on a... Uh, High school football, this would be a money down coming up right here for the Causey Tigers. Fourth and about four, a must pick up first down situation. And you don't see number 16 in white on the field. I don't. And that's huge here. Blair back to throw. And his pass was interrupted as one of the Eagles got to him as he brought his arm back, that's going to be ball over on downs to Pillins. And when you do look at head coach Matthew Moore, he felt that the keys to success tonight for his team were to control the controllable, eliminate distractions, and be a great teammate. You see a lot of camaraderie tonight. He didn't want them to turn the ball over. They are. They are you know, losing that turnover battle. Yeah. They're matching personnel tonight. But this 22 strong is being led by a head coach that was – a 2017 middle school championship coach, a 2017 track championship coach, began his coaching career in 2010 and coaches football, basketball, track, soccer, golf, and baseball. First and 10 coming up for Pillins. Ball's at the 39 yard line as they hand it off, play a little ground control here. Definitely want to eat some clock. Darrell Blackman on the carry, he picks up about two or three. You know, when you look at, you mentioned Joshua Flowers being a former Causey Tiger. There's right. so many, Rod Taylor being a former Causey Tiger. There's some notable Pillins Eagles as well. People like Amari Yelding, currently the quarterback there, and Bryce Dowling. So the tradition is rich for both of these middle schools it that is. continue to produce great student athletes at the high school level as well and make it fun for Friday nights football and Thursday afternoons you know you're going to get great middle school football as well. Just two weeks ago when we were here toward the end of the ball game that was a touchdown thrown by a young freshman quarterback and uh, you could see Coach Moore getting excited in the back because he had just coached the guy the previous year yeah. Corey so you know you can kind of see because Pillins feeds into BC ranks. Absolutely. So that's part of the feeder pattern. Well 5-10 remaining here and you do have Pillins facing a third down and two yards to go. No hurry here as you do have a great quarterback. It's behind the center. Kerry Rattler knows what to do with it. Rattler passes as they set up a little screen to Darrell Blackman, and he picks up the first down and more as Pillins gets into Causey territory. Great job by Darrell Blackman. Run after catch, yards after catch as well, and a great pass by Kerry Rattler. You look at him in the face of a great rush Just by out the there Tigers. And got open, yep. And you're looking at moving the sticks now.
first and 10, and the clock continues to tick. Causey only has one timeout remaining, but the Tigers have been able to turn over the Pillins Eagles three times tonight. We'll see if they're able to come away with one more, Al. This Eagles line averages 245 pounds. As I said, 22 strong. They, don't, they have 16 eighth graders on this team. That's a first down carry by McWilliams. Another great downhill run, and we'll have another Causey Tiger down on the play. Appears as if he's holding his wrist or hand. We'll take an injury timeout as well, and we'll come back. I'm Keith Blackwood, your Mobile County District Attorney. I want to remind you about the truancy laws. Five unexcused absences requires you to attend the Early Warning Truancy Program. Failure to attend the Early Warning Truancy Program can cause you to appear before a judge in circuit court. We need you to stay in school. This is a serious law, and it needs to be taken very seriously. I wish you and your family a safe, happy, and successful school year. Andrew player Jackson Williams a little dinged up. He Walks off the field with, under his own authority. I think it may have been a wrist or arm there, Corey. Yeah, and I know that we speak of the excitement of both of these communities, and you do have great crowd participation tonight coming out and supporting both of these schools. And yes. We've had an opportunity to talk to both of these principals on the sidelines tonight, and both of them talking about how motivated and how great student athletes they have here on the football field participating tonight. First and 10 from the 27. Pitch it out to McWilliams. That was dangerous there. Tigers all around him, but he held on to the pigskin. And it's just a matter of timing. The, the defense does a great job of disrupting the timing. When you're in the backfield already blowing up that play, there's not an opportunity to run any type of pass or trick play, and you will have another injury here. It looks like the cramps are coming out and being in full effect for the Causey Looks Tigers. Like, uh, Kai Davidson, number 31, as he is pulling at his thigh, his left thigh there. Another cramping situation taking place. We'll take another injury timeout. You're watching the MCPSS Middle School Large Division Championship. I believe my child's school is um, probably one of the best ones I could have picked in Mobile. She's in the PACE program. The teachers are phenomenal. The principal, I uh, couldn't ask for a better principal. The research that I had done myself, I believe the quality of education in Mobile County Public School System is excellent. For me and my child, I'm gonna stick with the public school system. I think it's the way to go. There's the eagle on the sideline, Corey. <laughs> eagle all up in the grill. <laughs> I, I love it. I love, I love it. it. And, you know, the excitement of middle school football, second to none here, is we're so passionate about our football here in the Mobile, Baldwin County area. But what a great job BC Rain has done of hosting these middle school championships today. Yeah, hats off to uh, head coach Lawrence Yelding and principal Carenza Williams for opening up the doors and allowing us to come in for a double dip. Snap, encroachment on the defense. Penalties five yards, still second down. The Eagles pick up free five right there. So it brings up second and about nine. There's a beautiful shot of a crescent moon here on the dip. Dolphin Island Parkway, Ben Glover Stadium, and a beautiful clear night. And Corey, I have to say, I, I rewatched our game from Citronelle and BC Rain about a week and a half ago. Double pass here, a little flea flicker. And that pass is complete, incomplete. Did not Kevin complete. Kevin Allred said, didn't complete the catch. Did not complete the process. Did he not. came down with it, and it was still juggling. It looked like it was going to be a touchdown. And if you look at the situation, that's what they've been trying to run all night long. We're able to do it. He comes down, but the great defense of the Tigers ripping the ball away at the last moment. Timothy McCants saves six points sure on did. the board. And we'll bring that back as the fans thought it was a touchdown. <laughs> Looked like a touchdown, but McCants kept that one from being six for Pillins. Got that hand in there and knocked it out of Miles' hand. Third and nine coming up here for the Eagles. He 
you see the trickeration, though. That's That's been in play a couple of times tonight to where they wanted to go ahead and have him uncontested, but the defensive back did a great job of holding his position, making sure that it was no trick play. Miles in motion. They go across the middle, complete the pass to Darryl Blackman. Blackman's going to pick up the first down, and the Eagles are in the red zone just like that. Marching in trying to get six and trying to add to this 28 points that they have. Causey with one timeout, Pillins with three remaining, but they're going to utilize all of the play clock that is being kept on the field by our White Hat this evening. 14-yard pass from Rattler to Blackman. First down for the Eagles. High snap, they just give it to Blackman. His big 6-1 frame as he just prances into the end zone for six, a 13-yard run for Darrell Black. Got to give credit to the big offensive line up front. Mosley, Vines, Godfrey, Pritchard, Tucker, Walker, creating a walk-in touchdown for the big fella, Darrell Blackman. And when you're 6'1", 175 pounds, and you get the help of the big uglies up front, Six more great yep. red zone execution there by the Pillins Eagles. As I said earlier, they averaged 245 pounds on that front line. They may be 22 strong, small in numbers, but strong in size, Corey. That's a lot of beef for a middle school team. Here's the two-point try. Direct snap to Miles. And he's going to just try to barrel into the end zone. And he gets the two points. 36 to 8 is our score. Pillins trying to march to victory and stay undefeated and win this championship. Eagles fans are swag surfing tonight, Coral Bounty in charge 36 to 8 over cause. Well, you know, I love science, and they always say in NASA the Eagle has landed. Well, I'll tell you what, the Eagle has landed on probably another championship trophy Correct. to the trophy case here as they are leading 36 to 8 with 218 remaining here in the fourth quarter of action, but it's, you know, you look at the first half, and if you're causing and you see the turnovers that you've been able to create, the only downside of that is you haven't been able to create points off of those turnovers. That and is correct. Only do, one touchdown yeah, and off when of three. You, you look at Jordan Jackson going down with cramps here late in the third and not being available in the fourth quarter. That really hurts, especially when that's what you want and who you do go to offensively. So we'll see here if Carson Blair is able to try to salvage some points for these Tigers. Empty set for the Tigers. Blair unleashes on the crossing route, incomplete, trying to hook up with Van Gesian. Brings up a third down and 10 here, and the Eagle faithful can taste it. Coach Moore signaling signs down to his defensive assistant, Carlos Terry, and they call timeout. timeout. Pillins calls timeout. We appreciate you all tuning in today for this middle school action, but tomorrow night we're going to return to the battlefield for a 5A Region 1 matchup as LaFleur will take on a red-hot BC Rain Red Raider team. Corey, they're 5-2 overall, 3-2 in the region. Coach Yeldon trying to return to the playoffs this season. The Red Raiders on fire, man. First win over UMS Wright since 1972. Wow, that's and huge. And that's a huge region win for them. Right. And you look at them being able to go on the road and clean up things 
from a penalty standpoint, Correct. they weren't looking great against Centennial. The scoreboard looked great. It did. But they had things to correct. They were able to go ahead and correct those against UMS right come away with a big-time win, and now they're taking on the Rattlers, and you don't want a trap game. You don't want to fall into that that's trap. That's correct. And that's, that's correct. what we'll keep an eye on tomorrow night is we've been keeping an eye on these Eagles all night long yes, and these have. Tigers doing battle in the large middle school division championship here at the Mobile County Public School System, and what a great job both of these teams have done all season long to get to this point in time. Third and 10 coming up here for the Tigers. Do a die time as they hand it off with the carry. Just gonna be pushed out of bounds. Skyler Roberson with the carry as he gets out of bounds to stop the clock. And now with one timeout remaining, cause he has, 36 to eight is our score. And it's been a situation where Penland's has only scored one touchdown here in the second half. Yeah, they started the third quarter up 28 to nothing, Corey, and gave up two turnovers here in the second half, but still in control, 36-8. So no quit. We have a personal foul, face mask on the defense. 15 yards in the previous spot, results in a first down. Oh, well, that's the big one as you give Causey 15 yards right there when you don't want to do it with 202 remaining in the ball game. No, nah, no quit at all though in the Causey Tigers. And you know, they're a reflection of their head coach, Coach Miller, who has been there for a long time and has seen successful results. And the type of team that he has and the offensive coordinator, Coach Orso, that he has, no quit in Causey Middle School as they're going to continue to attack this Pillins defense. Flair looking to go deep, airing it out. And you can see that flag coming in for the P.I. as the defensive back did not turn his head around in front of the receiver. So that's going to be a free 15. That's 30 yards and penalties just on this series, Corey. And when you do look back at it, you'll say, look, if we're going to have the most turnovers we have we've had all. On the defense, penalties 15 yards in the previous spot, results in a first down. The most turnovers we've had all season long and probably the most penalty yardage, at least we can look at the scoreboard and know that we took care right. of business by winning the football game. And it's our last game, so necessarily it, it does you don't want it to be your worst from a turnover and from a penalty standpoint, but you're ultimately looking at the scoreboard too. First and 10 from the 35 of Pillins. Blair passes it on the flare. He finally connects with Gavin and they haven't hooked up since the first quarter as he gets that ball down to the 19. And you do look at this Pillins defense communicating with one another, just trying to say, look, guys, all we need is this 11 strong on this defensive stop to try to come away with this Gatorade bath for our head coach, <laughs> Matthew Moore. First to 10 for Causey. Pass incomplete on the slant, running it for the Tigers. Tried to get that ball out to Aiden Hill. Brings up second down. Just a little bit too high for Aiden Hill, but you do again. The Tigers are going to continue to scratch and claw and try to get into that end zone to cut into this 36 to 8 deficit. And what better job and what better way to do it than to continue to attack the seams? that are wide open for the wide receivers because you're playing with a little bit of a cushion to make sure nothing gets behind you and you don't get beat deep. No press coverage at all, which is something you don't expect, but when you do have trips to the right, someone's going to be wide open down the seam. Roberson just to the right of Blair now switches back to the left. Toss it out to Blair. Pass is incomplete. That's not a lateral. Incomplete stops the clock. Third down to 10 coming up here for Causey. Down 36 to 8. 6 and 1 on the season for the Tigers. And Pillins comes in spotless at 7 and 0. Oh, trying to pick up the eighth win, but the most important, the championship win if they can, Corey. Yeah, there's nothing more than Principal Joseph Roberson would like to see his young men who have worked so hard to come away not only academically successful, but athletically successful, right. bringing home that middle school championship. Third down here for the Tigers. 
Lair is sacked. Ball is out. And it is recovered by Pillins. Blair getting up slow. He was just crushed on that play, Corey. Jaden Rembert comes from his defensive end position untouched from his blind side. He's able to go ahead and get the sack, forced the fumble. Pillins is able to recover, and you're looking at 112 remaining with the score being 36 to 8. You have an opportunity to go into what Miami was not able to do. And, and looks like that <laughs> they are going to go ahead and say this is still Causey football. No correction. I, I no thought it was a fumble, so I it's going to be Causey's cause ball still. So a timeout call by Pillins as Matthew Moore is going to plead his case to Brian Allred and Lance Crawford here on the sideline. I thought it was a fumble as well. I don't know if Charles can get the replay up for us, the way he can do it, but Corey, it was clearly, I thought it was a hit. The ball was out, unless they were saying his arm was coming forward. That's the only thing that it could have been ruled as an ah, incomplete that's a, pass. That's a but, fumble, Corey. You know, you do look at him cocking back, and that's going to be definitely what I would give credit for as a sack, but they're going to say it was an incomplete pass. Right. It's going to be fourth down and 10 yards to go. The ball is going to be right at the 19-yard line. And you are looking at a situation Fourth where down. When, when you spread out this Pillins defense, you do have a chance. The great job Carson Blair has been able to do. That last pass he had was just a little high for his wide receiver, Aiden Hill. If he's able to put it on the money, there's plenty of cushion being given by the defense and plenty of room in the middle of the field. See what Tim Miller and Mickey Orso dial up here. Fourth and 10, you got to get it. And Pillins gets it with the sack. Great pressure. As they sack Blair, they bought the jailhouse blitz, and they do it. And that's pretty much probably going to be the nail in the coffin as Matt Moore is going to try to secure his second championship as a head coach at Pillins, Corey. LaDarren Perkins, number 40, brings that defensive pressure once again, making it hard for Carson Blair to throw that pass. And here it is, 105 remaining, two snaps of the football and the game is over and the championship will remain not too far from where we're playing this game. <laughs> You're right. Less than two miles away is where Palmer Pillins Middle School is located and they're going to have a, a new championship trophy added to their collection. Causey has one timeout. Pillins has one timeout. They line up in the victory formation. And Corey, I'd be remiss if I didn't say I know we're a bit happy for Coach Moore. He serves as our statistician for us every Friday night for the broadcast, but in full disclosure, Corey, I have to say, he's one of my best friends and the godfather to my daughter. So uh, congratulations to Coach Moore and the Eagles. Is They're pretty much going to secure this victory tonight. Yeah, it's a big-time win for Please Matthew do. Moore. It came up a little short one year ago in heartbreaking sure fashion. Sure did, sure did. And he's able, what a difference a year makes for Matthew Moore and couldn't be happier. And we'll have to go ahead and, and tomorrow we'll have to rib him a little bit and <laughs> oh, bring up that we're gonna instant chat replay. Him tomorrow night. Yeah, oh, yeah, bring up that instant replay of him showing his best 40 yard dash impression <laughs> right there before the half when his player Matthew McWilliams got that interception. He's trying to he's trying to find the Gatorade <laughs> tub right now. You can see him pointing out as Pillins is pretty much gonna just give it up right here. Victory formation as they are going to win the large school division championship. Congratulations to Coach Matt Moore and Principal Joseph Roberson. Corey, not only do they win the championship, they do it in undefeated fashion going 8-0 on the season. Yeah, what we've seen here is our two middle school champions from a small division and large division be undefeated, Both undefeated. and finish perfect. And that's how you want to end it. Two months worth of hard work and blood, sweat, and tears by these young men from both teams. Really all four teams that participated, but a great win. Absolutely. As Pillins gets the win, 38-6. to six. Make sure you join us tomorrow. We're going to go live at 6.50 right here from the battlefield at Ben Glover Stadium. It'll be LaFleur versus BC Rain. But once again, congratulations to Coach Matt Moore and the Pillins Eagles as they are the 2023 MCPSS 
large school division champions. There it is right there, 650. We'll go live for Corley Bounty, executive producer Quentin Howard, director Wade Ford, engineer Fran Conway. I'm Al Whedon thanking you for joining in as the Eagles go, <laughs> and win the championship. <laughs>